Good evening, everyone. We're going to call to order the Point Roberts Community Advisory Committee regular meeting for August 15th at 7.01 p.m. First item is approval of agenda. I need to make an amendment, which will be, I guess we can put that under new business, um, discussion uh, regarding okay. inappropriate behavior at our last meeting. Do I have a second? Oh, second. Uh, All in favor? Aye. Okay, so we're gonna put that under new business. Okay. So approval of Jenna, approval of minutes. So moved. I will second. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. All in favor? I oh, and there's Bill walking in the door. <laughs> okay. Um Correspondence, um, we had a letter from um, Representative Larson's office regarding his letter to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control requiring the rules for transporting dogs across the border. This has been shared. He's requested that they put an extended stay on the rules. Um, the current rules are only supposed to be in effect until March or April, and then more stringent rules are supposed to be applied. And he's requesting that that be put on hiatus until they meet with his office some more for places like Point Roberts, where this would be extremely detrimental to the citizens that live here that don't have immediate access to vets. So um, Sean's really great. Sean calls me once a month. He is the aide to Congressman Larson, and we do a follow up meeting once a month. Um, he gives me a call, so hopefully we'll get another update on that soon. Uh, next is the course, the correspondence we'll discuss later um, regarding the last meeting. And first public comment. Does anyone have something that's not on the agenda that they would like to bring up, discuss? Seeing nothing in the room, anyone online? Okay, hey, seeing none, we will go to our old business, uh, TBD fund utilization. Uh, if you were at the last meeting, um, council member John Scanlon was here and um, Public Works was here to talk to us about how we can possibly use the TBD fund under the new RCW changes. There's been a few items that have been brought up at taxpayers. Mm -hmm. If you want to bring up any of those. Um, okay, well, um, all right. So there were all sorts of suggestions, um, most of which have been, I think, um, looked at. Uh, there were lots of suggestions about how to use the TBD fund. Does everybody know what TBD stands for? Okay, um, so um, lots of suggestions for ways of utilizing that money. Um, uh, I think the, what has boiled to the top uh, from lots of conversations um, is probably widening the roads and making the roads safer for pedestrians, covering some of the ditches, putting culverts in, et cetera, et cetera. But some of the other ideas were um, making an argument to use some of the funds for a pier at Lighthouse Park. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, widening the road at Lighthouse Park uh, and creating the crosswalk from the campgrounds over to the to the park. And what's the other one? stop signs at businesses oh, yeah. for egress out of like marketplace right. and fuel and, pantry. Yeah, yeah. Um, was it the rumble strips? Yeah, and... that was another conversation, rumble strips, strips. prior, uh, just before the, the stop signs. Yeah, um, and they used the, the, they brought up the S word, sidewalk. Yeah. 
Okay. I, I didn't want to say it out loud. Yeah. I, I would get struck by lightning, but a yeah, yeah, I know what they brought up silence is like, you know, they got up the garlic and the mirrors, you know. Uh, well, so, yeah. Uh, I'm not crazy about sidewalks, but I'm not crazy about shoulders. Shoulders, I know. Shoulders, yeah. yeah. Um, um, well, I would suggest that she is more than willing to meet with us, um, possibly if. You know, if everybody's good. If, uh, if Brian and myself were to maybe meet with Public Works, uh, find out the types of projects that they're thinking of, and also working to see if there's budgetary for. I know one of the big ones that's important to me is Benson on the north side, um, culverting those ditches, one for pedestrians, two for bicyclers, and three for our emergency vehicles to, especially when we hit the winter and stuff, basically yeah. the edge of the road is the ditch, mm -hmm. um, icy roads and things like that. I don't think any of us want to see our fire truck in the ditch, sliding into the ditch and things that obviously the fire truck has to go up and down Benson yep. to get to the main road. Um, if there's anything that is in their budget that maybe it can be a joint project where we're only like supplementing something, because I know that's what was done when uh, Johnston Road was put through. Mm -hmm. The majority of it actually came out of the county coffers and they supplemented 200,000 out of TV mm -hmm. so to be able to finish the project. So I'm thinking something like that. Is that one of the few things we've done the beautification on, on Tai E, mm -hmm. the, that money for Johnson? What In what other ways have TBD funds been used? Um, the yeah. signage um that's on the road mm -hmm. um and down in maple beach there's uh the parking no parking signs and the parking signs and things that are down in maple beach were paid out of tbd <laughs> when johnson road was put through that was prior to the prcac mm -hmm. being an official body and that's when the county just kind of pulled money out of tbd mm -hmm. how they yeah. wanted to um but i think that does give us a good reason to say joint project because even before we had to say what to use it for that's what they did. One point two million dollars. It's not a lot of money that's when it cool. comes to these kinds of projects. Oh, sure. Well, but that's what I'm thinking is, you know, okay, if it's one point two million dollars for this project, X project, or whatever, right. you know, if they put in a million and we put two hundred thousand out of TBD, it helps allow the project. Right. You know, I don't know what the culverting would cost to go down Benson, but that would be one I think that would be not too bad yeah no. one of the things that was discussed at taxpayers was um that people didn't want us to just step forward with unleashing the tbd funds yeah. if if the um improvement for the adjustment should actually be covered by the county right then we don't want we don't want to use the tbd funds if the county is just if the county will come balking because right i think what it does though in essence i don't know Brian, correct me if i'm wrong kind of give you a little leverage for projects like if you know the county's like oh well, we only have eight hundred thousand, and this project's going to be one a million five hundred Okay, well, how about we take the two hundred and fifty thousand out of TBD, and then we can get the project. It just gives you that little bit of leverage, is what I was thinking. Right. Also, the um, if I may, the um, bill itself uh, refers to the state law. Um, I'm not going to give you all the numbers, sure. but basically, when you go when you look that law up, it says the whatever improvement it is, it has to be in the transportation plan of the, whatever the agency is, in mm. the case it be the county. So we'll have, if we meet, then yeah. we'll, that's something we'll have to clarify and, and make sure, is it, is it the case for anything that we support? Well, I think that's why I also wanted to make sure we tried to meet with her soon because basically next year, right? Right? Yeah. So if we want, if it's something that we want isn't already in the plan, right? Now is our opportunity to get it into public works plan. And especially if it's, you know, we're talking about joint joint funding of, of projects. Yeah, no, and absolutely. The county works 
in such a way they'll have a list of priorities. They won't have them all funded. Right. But that it's important that we do do that. Okay. Uh, Brian, before you go any further, I don't want to use certain break for it, but I, I, I will. I will. Yeah. But um, because this is public record, yes, and we use terms like TPD funds, yes, say it out loud. So in case somebody pulls the recording and does not know what that is. Transportation Benefit District. Okay, and it's funds, like yes. you said, that support transportation. And there's a, a long a plethora. Way. There's a plethora of definitions of what qualifies okay. in state law. That's right. All right. But I just wanted that. <laughs> Thank you. Because we, because Thank we you. have a tendency to use, you know, monikers and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, right. Yeah. right. It doesn't matter whether you can do the job. <clears throat> it matters whether you can talk the job. <laughs> well, you look good doing it, so that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay, next is just the update. Except we have septic training Saturday morning from 10 a.m. to noon. Um, Jasmine will be here doing the class again. Um, I think we have around 60 people who are signed up. Saturday, right? Saturday, and I will be here to do setup. And you volunteered to do takedown. Is somebody willing to help him do takedown to reset up the room for the taxpayer joke telling contest? I'll be happy to help. Thank you. Yeah, I'm also going to be out in the parking lot to make sure there's no incidents with the pickleballs. Okay. Okay. I'll be out there. So, you know, Saturday. We... Perfect. Um, next is uh, just an update that our next meeting will be dedicated to the dra drainage study presentation um, by Whatcom County Public Works and the engineering firm. Um, so, we will be in the dining room. So that we will be able to fit some more people as well as um, doing Zoom um, for that presentation. Next is new business. Through this food bank conditional use permit. Yeah. Who would like to present? Jane. That's me. Where am I supposed to stand? You can stand up my owl. I think the owl the owl will pick you up just fine. The owl will be the front owl will be fine. Okay. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Jane Donaldson, and I'm here as the treasurer of the Trent Roberts Food Bank. And I just want, at this point in time, to give you a heads up of what's coming down the pipe. Um, and what's coming down the pipe is that we have applied for a conditional use permit for Point Roberts Food Bank storage on um, the, the lot that we want on 46 Teller Road. Um, the, so we received an email on July 25th that our conditional use permit was accepted. Um, so we don't know what the timing is now for the next steps, but they will happen. Um, that property is zoned RR2. And so putting a warehouse on it or a food storage warehouse, um, we need a conditional use permit. Um, a little bit of background for those of you who don't know. Um, in the past, well, the food bank operates out of here on Wednesday morning. We distribute the food. But to store the food, in the past, we've had a container that was on somebody's private property um, down on Gulf Road for a long time. Um, the woman who owned the property wanted to sell, so we had to get out of the container. Um, we were lucky enough that the camera loaned us some space at the pier um, until she needed it, and then we got kicked out of there. Um, so now we're, we're back in the containers. Um, the containers aren't heated, or I'm only trying to do that this winter, but so loose food. Uh, and this is for the non perishable stuff. Mm -hmm. The perishable stuff is in um, in the marketplace, they lend us space in their fridges and freezers. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have big shipments that come in, people just send it and it comes. And in the past, we've run out of room in our container, and then we got with some stuff over the fire hall, maybe. I think we have some stuff on top of shell, the shell station at some point. At one stage, yeah. So <clears throat> this makes it more difficult to, you know, you have to watch the best before dates and move, move stuff around. Anyway, um, when Henry was in charge of the food bank, it was a dream of his to have one spot that we could store everything in. And he managed to save up some funds. So we do have some funds available. And so we purchased the lot on Teller, and we would like to put a warehouse in there. Now, um, the land won't support septic, 
So there's going to be no water. We're going to have electricity, obviously. Um, so we can't serve food out of it. We can continue to bring it here, but tell her it's quite convenient. So that's that's not a problem. And we will um, we'll heat it. We'll have fridges and freezers in there, shelving, um, and and have everything enough room to have as much as we need in there. Mm -hmm. So that is our plan. Um, we have a wetland survey down there. There's a bit of wetland on there, and we need to put in a U-shaped driveway so that the fire truck can get in and out without backing up. Um, we'll do that. That pinches a bit on the wetland, but if we need to mitigate, we'll do that. Um, so we're we're planning to construct a coal building to use as a warehouse. It's sort of I think it's a bit like a kit or something that works in some of and it comes in with a garage door and a person door and you mm know -hmm. slab. Mm -hmm. So as I say, that's what's coming. I don't know what else what other information you would like at this time. Um Jane, I'm always curious about how things are going to look and either contribute or detract from this amazing <laughs> business district that we have here. Um, um, so so can you speak to, you know, are there plans to have the building look a certain way? Um, um, okay, as I say, it comes in a kit. Yeah. Um, it's uh, so it's not going to be terribly attractive is what we're saying i was gonna say chris might because it's isn't yeah, it's, it's similar yeah, to the yeah, one that chris, it's at her house chris, yeah you? actually uh, yeah, I can certainly speak to that. Is that okay, Ellie, if I share? Yes. Okay. So, um, Anel, if you drive by, you know, where our home is, we're behind the old Brewsters. If you look at our shop building, that is the manufacturer that we have chosen to go with. It is very attractive. It's a beautiful building. It's called a post frame building. So it is uh, lumber framed on the inside and metal exterior, and it's it's quite nice. So we will have one roll-up door, one man door, and two windows. It will be approximately 24 feet by 48 feet. And um, they're a really great company. We put them on speed dial when we built ours. So if there's anyone that ever wants to see what is that going to look like you are always welcome to get a hold of me and come view the inside of the building as well ours is smaller by 12 feet in length and um like i can't say enough about m and w out of uh, canby oregon they're a really great family-owned company they've been in business since 1981 and they are highly highly committed to wanting to help us make this project come to life. We call it the Henry Rosenthal building because that was Henry's vision. Um, Did so I the name of the, yes, thank you, Chris. The name of the M and W. M and W. Uh -huh, M and W building supplies. They're out of Canby, Oregon. Again, a family owned business. And it is actually who we went through for our building. We did get other quotes, and this company turned out to be the best for our budget that we have and for the customer service that I know that they uphold. Right. Thanks, Chris. So, what kind of a setback then do you expect? Ooh, I don't remember. Okay. Actually, it is a, a 25 feet on both ends, meaning on the north side and the south side. And we have to be 30 feet from the one particular residential that is to the east. And we are more, we have plenty of room to move things around um, and accommodate what the fire department um, county, the fire department portion of our various groups that we had to work through to get the um, conditional use permit uh, application um, sent in. 
that um, we have plenty of room to create that U-shaped driveway. It does mean that we have to shore up more of the culvert that is currently there that will not support a fire truck. So we will be increasing that as a structure to support um, the use of a fire if there's ever the need. Um, so the outside of the building, will it be like that corrugated metal or is it flat metal or? It's it's a, a type of corrugated. Again, you're welcome to come anytime, come look at ours and it's going to be very similar to what we have here on our property. And you, even if you just, if you don't even want, no one wants to stop by, just drive down Marine Drive towards uh, Saltwater Cafe and look across the field and you, you can't miss our building. <laughs> Yeah, and the building is actually, I'm just looking at the back, it's about 50 feet from the road <laughs> to be able to get all of the driveway in and everything. It's about 50 feet from the road. Yeah, right. It's set back a lot. It's set and, back 50. Yeah. yeah, but thank you again, Ali, for all of your assistance up to this point. We couldn't yes. have gotten here without you. So everyone knows I will be abstaining on anything to do with this project because <laughs> I did all the same plans. And exactly. <laughs> So, so the, that's the building way back there. You said there's no right. septic, right? So, yeah. and, and yeah. These are my wetland buffers. Okay, so there's. Okay, is this the circular drive? No, this is the circular yeah. drive. Yeah. Oh, building's 50 feet. That's teller. But you will we'll be seeing a full, you guys will be seeing a full conditional use permit application and same as, you know, the last one. And then once it finishes the conditional use permit, then when they apply for a building permit, we will get what we always do, which is our checklist to go through for lighting, landscaping, and everything else to ensure that it meets all of the requirements. Do you have some money in your budget for landscaping? Yes. Okay. Yes. How much do you just out of curiosity? Well, well, because we haven't got the permit yet, we haven't done that detail of landscaping okay. or of, of budgeting. Yeah. It'll be, depend on what the wetland delineation yeah. is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Jane. Okay, well, thanks. Thank you, Chris. Pat, you have your hand raised. Yeah, can you ask what the model number is? I'm looking at the website uh, here, and there's quite a variety in the buildings that they uh, uh, offer. Do you, uh, does the food bank know what the model number is? We do not at this time, and that's only because we, until we lock it in as an actual contract with M&W Builders, um, look at the ones that are the commercial. There's a few pictures with uh, one roll-up door, one man door, and that with basically about a 312 pitch. That's primarily what we're looking at from a generic standpoint. Yeah, I am looking at them, and they sort of range from totally utilitarian to pretty ugly. So that's why I was curious if you had a particular number. Not at this time yet. And of course, when we go through the rest of the process, we will certainly be floating that information in more specific detail in okay, the near, near future. Thank you for the question. Thanks. And, and you said it's 24 by 48? Yes, sir. Correct. With about a uh, uh, 13 foot at the eaves to support a uh, roll-up door that'll be approximately 12, 12 foot wide by 10 foot tall. Anyone else have any questions? Yeah, there's no separate. There's no separate. So inside, uh, no water, no bathroom. Right. Okay. Just electricity to the Just building. Just the electricity. Got it. Yeah, I was just going to say, it's like, yeah. Well, thank you guys. And we look forward to uh, seeing the uh, CUP. Oh, so do we. Come across. <laughs> okay, next item was about the roadside dumping. Mm -hmm. Who wants to take that one on? Uh, so again, this was a lengthy conversation at uh, taxpayers. Um, the bottom line was that um, taxpayers think that 
having some security cameras aimed at the places where they typically don't, like so right out here, um, someplace on Johnson, or this place on Boundary Bay. Um, and uh, one of the taxpayers members um, donated, offered to pay for the first camera. So taxpayers is talking about having basically a library, a camera library, so people can check them out, use them, problem solve, bring them back, et cetera. Um, so I don't think there's any disagreement about from anybody that it's an issue and that we need to address it. Okay, sorry, the idea would be, oh, I speak? Yeah. yeah, okay. So the idea would be that you take a camera, you catch who does it, and then, and then what? Turn that information over to the sheriff. To the sheriff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's illegal. And um, so once that, you know, there are, the license tag, or um, we figure out somehow or another who this person is, then it goes to the to the sheriff's department. Did yeah. you say these are something you check out of the library? No, we intend to hold a virtual library of cameras. So we'll start with one, and we'll we're going to solicit more funds from the community to buy several. Cameras, so they'll be permanently installed. No, they will be used temporarily. It's my my understanding, right? You are exactly right. In other words, think about you know the owls, right? We've got a box full of owls. Okay, we have over there. We got a box full of cameras. People come in and use the cameras and bring them back yeah. if there's incidents. Because, like you said, you could pretty much go with a magic marker or a big white can of paint and say. I bet you there's going to be a sofa, refrigerator, or something here within the next 30 days. I okay. My biggest irritation was just I can't stand, I'm tired of the littering. Yeah. I just, I've had it with the littering because besides the dumping, because we get it on Johnson, people will just, and then they'll put the sign out, say free, and then they'll forget that they put it there and it's there until health freezes. I don't think it's about No, I don't think it's <laughs> I, I just, but I've seen it so many times that it's been out on, especially Johnson, because we come back. But what bothers me is, especially going out and up and down Taiyi along Johnson, I'm tired of the loop. APA, I, I'm tired of the loop. Okay, but could we stick with the cameras? Oh, yeah. So we're talking about using cameras now to, to bust livers no, as well? Oh. No, I just... I just, it was just part of the conversation we had the other night. Right. Because How can the cameras help? Is that, is for one thing, as deterrent, okay. because we'll let everybody know. There's cameras. There are cameras that okay. we have now, okay. it's, that we now have uh, cameras there, that there are okay. permanent, semi-permanently installed okay. until sure. the problem is sure. solved. And then we'll move the camera yeah. to another place. But we're going to have have a library of cameras. I don't know that we'll ever disclose how many cameras we have. Yeah. Um, but you know, we'll have a right. uh, a, a library so system of cameras that we can post. And obviously, yeah. they have to be battery battery, so that we don't have to hook them up to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. All those kinds of things. Well, I'm going to be the naysayer. Yeah. One, I see an issue of. One, you can't put anything within the right of way. It belongs to Whatcom County. Got we it. can't just be going and installing cameras mm -hmm. in the Whatcom County right of way on posts or telephone poles or anything mm -hmm. of right. that matter mm -hmm. um, because that's illegal. Mm -hmm. um, two, I'm not sure how people would feel about just random cameras within the right of way, who knows where, while they're walking their dog or this side or the other. Um, if someone happens to have a piece of property that abuts a problem area, mm -hmm. I would suggest that they put a camera on their property facing the right of way mm -hmm. to try and catch those individuals because they can do that. It's on their own private property. They can do that. Um, but 
it's a very slippery slope for either taxpayers, PRCAC, to be trying to come up with something like this that's in the county right of way when it's not our jurisdiction. If the county wants to do that, that's up to the county. But we could say to people who people have ring doorbell cameras and things like that. And I will tell you, when we did the very first septic here at the community center, because of all of the tools, we had trail cameras out there just to make sure that nobody did anything they weren't supposed to do or stole any of the equipment. We have our trail cameras, which we had on this property. Right. And we do that actually at a lot of our job sites. We have battery operated trail cameras that we leave at the job site just to prevent people from stealing our stuff. Um, so, uh, so anyone who wants to check out uh, a camera would need to sign a form that says that they're going to use it on private property. Private property. Yeah. Well, if taxpayers can, I, I personally, taxpayers can have that. I'm, I'm, I'm just still calling the taxpayers. Well, I, not necessarily. I think that, you know, it's more of an individual homeowner thing. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not understanding you now. If somebody, the cameras are not expensive. Right. They're literally $25. If somebody has a, a issue on their property and have a concern, then they can buy the $25 camera and put it there. Yeah. Because otherwise, as an association, if somebody then uses your camera that was provided by your association to do something illicit to like spy on their neighbor or something like that, you could be held liable. Okay, good points. Mm -hmm. Right? Because mm -hmm. not everybody is, right, honest and maybe using them for something that they shouldn't be using anymore. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. drones, same. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's just my I personal opinion, opinion on that one. But I agree, the littering is out of control because somebody reason. actually, there's a sign that says $250 fine, whatever. Yeah. And guess what? Somebody stuck something at the base of it. Yeah. yeah not the... So people are going to be stupid. I just people are going to be stupid. And hope that most people are, you know, they're starting to get shamed on next door and stuff. And I think maybe that's, you know, going to prevent there's people from doing a little bit. Before the post is on the end of our street, you know, across the street, this is nobody's, well, it's an empty lot. And so before it, without the shaming notice, sure enough, two days later, it's gone. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just still disappointed that the gas station is still a mess. So I did, um, so I did get a hold of the health department. The health department did email me back. They have sent a letter to the company. The company has so many days to respond and then they get the second letter and then it basically says, we're going to clean it up and you're going to have, and we're going to bill you for it. Right. So the county does have to go through their process, but it, the process has started. That was mid July that they set the original letter. So we're just coming up to the 30 days. So we're by there. They pick all the trash, the trash cans. Look like they were all empty. Yeah. And were they, you know, they, you know, I'm wondering if they did. Yeah. Cause yeah, it was, yeah. they were given 30 days from the right, day so of the yeah. letter. Yeah. 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 Just right by and take a look at it. I'm pretty sure that they, they did actually did a clean up. Yeah. yeah. Did they? Yeah, it was not as of yesterday. What? It was not clean as of yesterday. I would, I was, yeah. I would call okay. this morning and I looked. Okay, good. Yeah, see, so that's why I, I could say it because I, and it's it's for the intent that somebody sees an, an open space and uses it. That's my issue with it. It's not so much going to the company, say, clean it up. Okay, they're going to clean it up. But like any space, somebody sees it as an open space just to take advantage. Yeah. And that's what I got a problem with. Uh -huh. Sorry. Yeah. One of the things about the cameras, um, you know, it was on the park where we had a, a lot of dumping in one area, and there was a long discussion about putting cameras up to try and find out. And it was every week someone was dumping trash bags in this one area. And all I did is put up a sign which says that there was a camera there, and the dumping just stopped. Yeah. And it just stopped. Didn't have to put up a camera, just put up the sign. and. It stopped after that point. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, oh, well, so it sounds like um, taxpayers needs to have another conversation about sure. um, setting this up and um, talking about liability and possibly just using the money to make signs and put signs up about um, smile, you're on candy camera. Yeah, there you go. Oh, don't, don't dump up the street. <laughs> don't dump up the street. <laughs> okay. Next is the added item, which was inappropriate behavior at our last PRCAC meeting. Two emails were sent to the Parks Department um, regarding it. Um, the behavior obviously um, breaks AL rules and codes of conduct. Um, yep. Basically, a member of the community decided to um, verbally attack um, Karen Nielsen, Laura Nielsen's wife. Um, screaming things such as your husband sells poison and your children are going to die. Oh, and then proceeded to continue it out into the parking lot. And then um, myself, as well as Dee, were informed by people who were outside um, that the same member was not just yelling at Mr. Nielsen, saying swear words and using some finger profanity, um, was also screaming at other members of the community to get out of their way and swearing and things out in the parking lot. Um, obviously, um, you know, uh, one of the people who wrote who um, was not one of the Nielsen's um, basically said that they did not feel comfortable coming to public meetings um, if that was going to be how people um, act. Um, I did apologize to Karen personally. Um, I did not realize that when this was happening, as everybody was kind of leaving the meeting and we were still having the meeting, um, she actually was mouthing help to me and I did not happened to catch her I um, so my recommendation would be that uh, the member of the community that did this receive an email from the PRCAC stating that this is unacceptable behavior this is your one and only warning um, that if this happens again at a, another PRCAC meeting you will no, no longer be, you will not be allowed to attend for one year. Um, giving them an opportunity to be an adult, not do it again. If they do do it again, it gives them a year to think about, it. Think about you know, what they did and, you know, if that was appropriate or inappropriate and, you know, given the opportunity to, you know, be able to participate because we want everybody to participate, but we also want everybody to be nice and kind and yeah. You know, but that would be my recommendation. Civil, civil, decorum, civility goes a long way. It's amazing. Yeah, sure. yeah. You know, level of decorum. We don't always have to agree, but we can agree to disagree. Yeah. Right. Um, and I always say I use D as a great example. You know, during the first part of Garbage Wars, um, she was all the way on that side and I was all the way on that side and we're friends. And we decided at that time, we just didn't talk about it. And then years later, actually we talked about it and realized our answer was actually in the middle. Our answer was actually in, in the, the middle. middle. Of course, our answer, so. you know, it was in the middle, but we could be adults and agree to disagree you know, on that. And when we were at the point of where we couldn't agree to disagree, we just didn't talk about that particular subject together because it just wasn't worth it, right? So if everybody's good with that, I will make a motion to write the letter and submit it to yeah, second. all in favor. Aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> He's even happier. There we go. So um, now we're to our last public comment. Does anyone in the room have anything that we should have talked about, didn't talk about, or you'd like us to talk about in the future? Back to the fund, the funding, 
do, do we have a list of priority prioritized projects that you want to do? You mentioned, you know, the culverting on, on Benson, uh, Doc, down it, it, you know, there, there was a number of items. Do you have, you know, is there a consensus of a list of, you know, if we can only have three, what three would that be in that order? Well, so I think that's why Brian and I need to meet with Public Works first, because yeah, one, yeah. we need to see, because it has to be something that's dual. Well, and it has to be part of their plan, yeah. or we have to get it on their plan. Okay. Okay. Um, and as well, you know, whatever projects, you know, do make sense within what they can do. And then we can kind of come from them with the their laundry list of what we could do. Yeah. And then we can go out to the community to say, okay, here's a laundry list. What are our priorities and, you know, funding That's amounts? Okay. And then we can make the request to Public Works after that. But, you know, we have to do the first crucial step, which is, you know, I don't think, honestly, we can't go to Public Works and say, hey, build us a pier. Yeah. Right? That's but we can go to Public that's Works. That's point. Yeah. But we can go to Public Works and say, hey, we want to culvert this road and we want to create, you know, an edge to the road. Right. We want to, you know, make Lighthouse Park, the the curve on, on, on Maureen there, safer we want to widen that create a walking path biking path and we would like to have a sidewalk there you know that has little you know <laughs> but like things like that you know what's in their wheelhouse and what makes sense for the community you know and i know they don't want rumple strips no but they don't want rumble strips but i was in where was i i was in ferndale i was in the backwoods of ferndale and they have these really cool stop signs that are solar powered. They got this little solar panel on it. Right. And they're solar powered. And when it gets dark out, the little lights go around it. They flash. Yeah. Yeah. They flash. They kind of, yeah. Well, yeah. the one I thought, they didn't flash. They actually went in a circle. Oh, this LED light can come right? up. So that you know, flash. hey, there's a stop sign. <laughs> yeah. Let's go through it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Speed up. But you know that you know, hey, maybe that's something we want to think about. Okay. You know, if we can't have rumple strips and stuff like that, no would that maybe be yeah. something that would actually smack somebody in the face as I almost got hit trying to pull out of I thought they didn't want speed bumps, but there was not a discussion on rumble strips. Yeah. Well, those are different. They're yeah, different. they're not big on rumble strips. I don't know why they're not big. Maybe it's because of the big uh semis that come down the road. It could be that, like the same reason we cannot have roundabouts on Tai, right? Because we have double tanker trucks and semi trucks that come down Tai, right. and DOT requires big space. It would be big space, and yeah. unless we're going to take out the plumbing section at Nielsen's, it's not going to happen, right? It's it's a lot, but just for the semi trucks. Like the size of the traffic circle is huge. If anybody's ever gone to um, taking the Lummy exit and you see how big those traffic oh, circles yeah. are, yeah. that's how big ours would have to be, yeah. right? Um, it's just not, that's it's not feasible. They work. That's the way they work. But finding other ways that maybe, you know, because I think the stupid lights that hang over the flash red, they yeah. just need to go. I don't think they're not doing, they don't do anything, right. you know, the, <laughs> this it's a waste of the yeah, but uh, yeah. but yeah, that would be the the first step because there's no point to me to make a wish list yeah. unless we know if that wish is possible to even be granted. That sounds good. <laughs> that sounds good. Anybody else have anything? Um, a couple of things. Um, first of all, I've had a few people approach me about just having um, town hall meetings where people are invited to come and create a, a vision for what we want Point Roberts to be. Um, so that's number one. Number two is um, Circle Care is, is reprising the Apple Harvest Festival. Again, this year, it is the last weekend in September. And so it'll be the same sort of thing, uh, apple pressing and some sort of event on uh, Saturday night and bingo on Sunday. And pies. And, and well, pies before that. So get your pie orders in everybody. Yeah. And please, if you're interested in helping, 
um, with Apple Harvest Festival, whether it's juicing apples or whatever. Um, yeah, whatever. Please let me know if you're willing to lend a hand. And anything else? Okay. Yes. May I make a motion? You may. <laughs> I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that motion. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone, for coming. And don't forget, our next meeting, third Thursday in September, will be a presentation by Public Works and the engineers on the stormwater project. It should be very interesting. The preliminary paperwork I saw was 67 pages long. Um, if they're going to have a PowerPoint for that, could you just have that? Uh, besides having it in the video, could you make sure they put it online so we can read it? Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, Lee, you have your hand up? Uh, yeah, I ended up talking to the guy in public works, and uh, he said the study actually won't be done till December, but that they have a lot of information for us to present. The preliminary portion of the study is supposed to be released in September. The finalized, which right. has the budget amounts, isn't until December. Okay. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah.